right, welcome, Revelers. This is Off the Rails, Right versus Left, the, pod- the podcast that we do because we think the left is evil. I'm Rob B. And I'm Brad Lee. And I'm Brian G. <laughs> and we are Off the Rails, Right versus Left. Again, we're doing this show because we think everybody needs to know that the left is evil. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Right versus Left, Off the Rails, Right versus Left. I'm Rob B. With me as always, Brad Lee. And of course, our resident leftist sympathizer because he still thinks they're human beings. Brian G. <laughs> um, <laughs> so so today we're doing uh, another watch party. Um, we're going to be doing them every other week, but we're doing this one a week early because I'm going to be traveling next week and we want to make sure that we get out there. Uh, today we're doing choosing death, the legacy of Roe. Um, it's hosted by Michael Knowles from the daily wire. So again, it's daily wire making great, uh, great content and, uh, doing everything they can to bust through the fog of lies. That is the liberal, uh, blabber spear. Um, <laughs> So uh, that's what we're going to be watching today. Um, Choosing Death, Legacy of Roe. Um, uh, Brad, you've already seen the movie. Any like uh, comments you want to make as we're going in? Or should we just jump right into it? It, it, You know, I mean, I don't know how how emotional you guys get, but some of it made me emotional. So I don't know. Uh, It's it's pretty interesting. Uh, You're going to find out a lot about... uh, the creation of Planned Parenthood and the evilness behind it. And uh, yeah, so shall we get into it? Hey, Brad, you got a box of tissues next to you? (laughs) No, I've I've seen it a couple of times, so it's it's all good. He's going to adapt the ears of the box. (laughs) My voice might crackle a little bit, though, during the comments. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) okay so here we go thanks again daily wire don't lie to yourself the man who lies to himself and listens to his own lie comes to a point that he cannot distinguish the truth within him or around him and so loses all respect for himself and for others and having no respect he ceases to love this insight of dostoevsky in the brothers karamazov cuts to the heart of the entire abortion debate. For 50 years, the pro-abortion movement has done everything it can to focus the debate away from mothers and babies and onto dubious, abstract rights. In Roe versus Wade, they pretended that emanations and penumbras of the Constitution, unknown to the people who wrote the Constitution and invisible to the naked eye, had actually secretly enshrined a right to abortion that had, for whatever reason, gone undetected until 1973. It was a lie. No matter how much the pro-abortion movement wished it were so, the Constitution simply does not include any right to abortion. In the 1990s, abortion advocates called for the procedure to be safe, legal, and rare. Today, they call for abortion on demand without apology throughout every stage of pregnancy up until the moment of birth, sometimes even after birth. Approximately 875,000 babies are killed every year in the United States through abortion. That slaughter is allowed to continue because of the lie invented in Roe v. Wade that the Constitution included a right to abortion. This legal lie derives from a biological lie, namely, the lie that a baby in the womb is not a person, a living human being. It derives also from a statistical lie pulled out of thin air by the pro-abortion movement that in the years before Roe, thousands of women died each year from illegal abortions. Now, almost 50 years after Roe versus Wade, the court has the opportunity to correct the record and come clean about abortion. It looks like the court is poised to do just that, and the pro-abortion movement is showing that it will stop at nothing to maintain the lie. On May 2nd, 
Politico reported that it had obtained a leaked draft of a majority opinion in Dobbs versus Jackson Women's Health Organization, which not only upheld a pro-life law in Mississippi, but went further to overrule Roe and Casey. The leak sent shockwaves throughout Washington. The following day, Chief Justice John Roberts confirmed that the draft was authentic, calling the leak a singular and egregious breach of the trust of the court. Two days after that, a pro-abortion group calling itself Ruth Sent Us published the home addresses of six Supreme Court justices, the five who apparently had voted to overrule Roe, as well as John Roberts, who had appeared to have sided with the liberals on overruling Roe and Casey. Around the country, abortion supporters began targeting ordinary defenders of life. Activists stormed churches on Mother's Day, shouting for abortion. Pro-life offices and pregnancy centers in Oregon, Wisconsin, and Maryland were hit with vandalism and arson. In Madison, a pro-abortion group took credit for the attack, saying, if abortions aren't safe, then you aren't either. It is not yet clear how the Supreme Court will rule in Dobbs. It is not yet clear if the court will stand by the draft opinion and finally overrule Roe and Casey. What is clear is that telling the truth requires extraordinary courage. The people who make up the pro-life movement from the grassroots level to the highest reaches of the government are risking their lives to tell the truth. If the justices on the Supreme Court can face down the mob for the truth, so can we. The Daily Wire is committed to telling the truth about abortion, to exposing the lies, to telling the real stories about what abortion is from the people who have fought it, to the people who have practiced it, to the people who have survived it. And we can only do that because of you. This content doesn't come easy and it doesn't come cheap. And that is why we are so grateful to all of our Daily Wire members who enable us to fight this fight. It is because of you and others like you over the years that the pro-life movement has been able to push back against entrenched powers, to gain ground little by little, to expose the lies of the abortion movement, and now to find ourselves on the cusp, almost a half century later, of finally overruling the most egregious court decision in the history of the United States. It's because of your courage, clarity, and commitment that we're able to tell the truth. I'll pause so it right there first. Obviously, this was uh, made before the Supreme Actually. Court came out on the with the ruling. Yeah, and I think it's great for our viewers. Our first episode that we did when it was just me and Brad was actually on this exact topic. But you have to go find it. YouTube struck our account for it. Um, so, you know, the F YouTube. Um, anyway, so, yeah, if you want to check that out, you'll have to go and look over at our Rumble. You just go to uh, Robbie Brown, but um, I think most of the tags are on there that you can search for uh, off the rails, right versus left. Uh, the link will be down below also. Um, but Or Spotify. So, yeah. So make sure you subscribe to us on Spotify, YouTube, um, uh, Rumble, wherever you're getting this. And uh, make sure if you like the content that the Daily Wire puts forward, make sure that you go and uh, subscribe to them and um, help them with the good work that they're doing. Absolutely. And, 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 and if you get behind the paywall, the Daily Wires, they're they're going to be putting out. They they promised a hundred million dollars to making children's content after Disney did their stupid, uh, non secret, uh, gay agenda that they're putting forth. And so, as soon as they come out with the uh, the child stuff, the children's content, I'm I'm more than likely going to get rid of Disney Plus because it's not worth it. So oh, they're anyway. coming out with some pretty disgusting stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting, and we end up with uh, um, Snow White and the Seven Transgenders. Right. You never know. That might happen. That would be live action too. So. Yeah. Well, it could turn so. Star Wars into the transgender universe. Right. <laughs> I mean, it is Disney here. It, it, <laughs> I, I will say, you know, the Disney movies are becoming more and more like uh, Spaceballs as time goes on. Like, 
<laughs> hey, that was one of the greatest movies of all time. So, oh, my, my youngest daughter loves it. She's oh, yeah, that's awesome. great. I knew it. I'm surrounded by assholes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They've got oh, plaid. <laughs> that, that line that you just said, Brad, that's how I feel every day the show. Anyway, all right, let's go ahead. <laughs> that's because you are, brother. Amen. <laughs> I mean, you are surrounded by assholes. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Everybody's got one. Some are dirtier than others. Yep. <laughs> I, I just washed mine not too long ago. So. Oh well, lovely, lovely. Thank you. <laughs> it smells. It smells like lavenders and melatonin. Jeez. <laughs> melatonin. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, bad Brad. Jeez. <laughs> Let's continue the show. All right. <laughs> um. Many times when we did this as we started uh, patients would begin crying and protesting but once we had begun dilating the cervix and passing instruments into the uterus it was too late to stop I was handing a hush money to women who we had left pieces of their baby. We had put these women's lives in jeopardy. We had put their lives at risk, and we were literally giving them a check for $800. And for a poor woman, $800 is a lot of money. I mean, there have been so many moments in the last decade plus of going undercover in abortion clinics myself and seeing just heartbreaking things. Women vomiting in the hallway of an abortion clinic, crying out in pain. The late-term abortionist talking casually about how they would literally leave a born alive baby to die. Or if you deliver the baby in the toilet, then you pick it up and stuff it in a plastic bag and bring it to us. Babies are being born alive and the backs of their necks are being slit. They are being drowned. Um, their necks are being snapped. It's, it's happening more often than people want to think about. These abortion facilities, these abortion providers, these doctors, they don't care about these women. And you're just, you're realizing it, you're watching in front of your own eyes play out America's greatest horror story, which is how we butcher children in the name of choice. One of the most interesting things, and I, I was uh, just beginning college back in the late 1960s and 70s, the momentum toward legal abortion uh, had begun to run into real trouble. The justices in Roe v. Wade decided the way they did because they thought they were going to settle the question. They thought they were going to end the abortion debate, just kind of get rid of the controversy by legalizing it at the federal level through the court. Roe v. Wade was the decision by the Supreme Court in which they invented a right to abortion based on a very strained reading of the Constitution and a false reading of American history. The most important thing, it seems to me, about Roe v. Wade, the case, is that every single factual representation that Justice Blackmun makes about the sociological realities of abortion, about the safety of abortion, about the history of abortion, None of that information was ever presented at the trial level, which is where, in the law, in the United States at least, we sort out the contested disagreements over facts. So Justice Blackmun goes on and on in the opinion about the safety of abortion versus childbirth, about the history of abortion, about the history of the law of abortion, none of which was tested for accuracy or, or validity in the trial court below. It's all just his own rank speculation based on his research, which, by the way, involved 
relying on a handful of law review articles written by the former general counsel of NARAL. Which is still today one of the most uh, pro-abortion uh, lobbying groups in the country. Co-founders of NARAL is a man named Bernard Nathanson, who is a OBGYN who performed tens of thousands of abortions. He was an abortion provider in the state of New York. He helped build um, what would be known eventually as the pro-choice movement. In his autobiography, The Hand of God, he talks about how he had a difficult task of changing the mind of Americans to accepting the pro-choice argument. My name is Bernard N. Nathanson. I'm a physician practicing obstetrician and gynecologist. He was one of the major kind of pro-abortion activists behind pushing the Supreme Court to legalize abortion in Roe v. Wade. Uh, so definitely a very prominent abortion rights activist um, around the time of Roe. And I think I've had a passing experience in matters of abortion. He personally was responsible for over 60,000 abortions, even including his own child. But the whole story has changed since the 1970s. In the 80s, he had a radical conversion and became pro-life. And one of the things Bernard Nathanson said in his memoir was that organizers of NARAL understood they needed some powerful narratives to try to change people's minds. He wrote later in life about four key lies that were told by the pro-abortion movement in order to normalize abortion in America. They had a hurdle to overcome. The whole purpose was to change the acceptance of abortion by the American public. First, they claimed that, you know, abortion is a medical procedure, it's not a moral procedure. That's really a false dichotomy because you can ask most medical students today and they'll tell you the first tenet of medicine is first do no harm. So foundational to medicine is the Hippocratic Oath which dates back to ancient Greece when the physician Hippocrates established this oath that all physicians take before they practice medicine, that they will not deliberately harm any individual patient. And that basically gets us to a moral argument. I mean, medicine loses its, its, its view of what is morally right. We've lost our way. The common lie on abortion is that this is like getting your tooth pulled. I mean, this is a medical procedure. The reality is medicine is designed to heal or to save lives. Abortion is the intentional destruction of an innocent human life, a child's life. And it's violent, it's barbaric, it's cruel. It involves often dismemberment of a child with a beating heart, uh, sometimes a lethal injection of a child with a beating heart. It's excruciating. And for the mother, we don't talk about this in our culture. It's not popular to talk about, but it can be devastating. And those are the facts. But when people are being lied to constantly, it's hard for them to see this issue correctly because they've not actually given the truth about what abortion is. Yeah, I think the pro-abortion movement um, has turned to this argument that abortion was just always totally normal throughout history and only suddenly became uh, something that pro-lifers were fixated on in the middle of the 20th century. That's simply not true, actually. The common law tradition has always been anti-abortion. And there was, uh, you know, kind of before the science was clear, there were differing opinions on when human life actually begins. Uh, but there was always a, a fundamental um, sense, both in Great Britain and then in the United States, where we kind of carried on that legal tradition, that once there is a human life, abortion is wrong. The clause of the Constitution that Justice Blackmun purported to interpret, in his opinion, Roe v. Wade, was the phrase, no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Ratified in 1868 at a time when abortion was criminalized virtually everywhere in the United States. The state of Ohio, shortly after ratification, tightened its criminal restrictions on abortion to apply from the moment of conception on the ground, in the words of the drafters of the, of the law, that abortion is child murder. Okay, Nobody who voted for the uh, 14th Amendment, nobody who had heard of the 14th Amendment in 1868 believed that it had anything to do with abortion, much less prevented the states from protecting unborn children, which this, almost every state did in that context. 
Even if you were to study feminist history, early feminist history in the late 1800s into the 1900s, you would see that women like Alice Paul, women like Susan B. Anthony, they opposed abortion. They spoke out against abortion. If you look at the civil rights movement, you see black women like Mildred Jefferson. You see women like Fannie Lou Hamer, who were strong advocates. Fannie Lou Hamer is a well-respected Democrat leader and a civil rights leader. And she spoke out calling legal abortion, legal murder. All throughout history, you see that there are women who were on the front lines, who were leaders, who vocally and strongly opposed abortion. It seems to me that Planned Parenthood and abortion supporters who use this argument about abortion being okay up to quickening are intentionally misconstruing the facts. They're pretending like we always had the science that we had about human life way back into the 1600s and people back then just thought abortion was moral uh, up until you could feel the baby move. But the fact is, they didn't, and I think Planned Parenthood is well aware that that's the reality. So, tell me a little bit about Planned Parenthood. What is Planned Parenthood, and how was it involved in the history of abortion? Planned Parenthood is the most powerful arm of the abortion industrial complex. The largest uh, producer of abortions in the United States is the Planned Parenthood Federation. Uh, when you read their founding documents, they do not talk about uh, medical ethics. They don't talk about protecting the vulnerable. Uh, they don't talk about protecting women. They essentially uh, have cast their uh, lot with, with the idea of population control, and so they thought that the government could sterilize and abort its way uh, out of high welfare costs. Abortion supporters often argue that Abortion is especially necessary for women in difficult situations, whether that's women in abusive relationships or women uh, who are maybe in a low income situation and need a better job or whatever it might be. Um, they argue that abortion is a solution for these women. First of all, I think that's a very ugly claim. As a society, we don't do this with anything else, right? If we um, went into kind of a, a struggling nation where people were starving and we killed a bunch of impoverished people, would we have made the country better off? They have more food to go around, they have more resources. We don't actually solve problems by killing other human beings to make our, our resources more available. There's definitely a eugenics factor here, which that's why and how Planned Parenthood was started to begin with by Margaret Sanger. The worst thing that could have happened to black life is Margaret Sanger. Uh, she studied under people like Nazis to say, how do we figure out a perfect race? She wanted to make sure that certain populations of people were controlled. And she wrote in a letter that she didn't want word to get out that she wanted to exterminate the Negro population. She considered people of color and the disabled to be like human weeds that should be pulled out of the ground, the ones that were unclean, the ones that were unfit. She went after African-American leaders and pastors to pay them to market to their people to kill their offspring so that there would not be that many blacks in this country. Unfortunately, those roots of eugenics, it really has borne fruit African-American women, we are three times more likely to abort than other races. And we have abortion as the number one cause of death in our community, and it's truly devastating. Targeting minorities is systemic in the entire industry. We were told that we were to go into minority neighborhoods, low-income neighborhoods, there's about the abortion services to essentially lure these minority women into our facilities. What has happened to African-American communities as a result of Margaret Sanger's plan to interject abortion in a very vulnerable, poor community has unraveled our family life. Most people don't appreciate that by the 60s, black family life was still relatively healthy. 78% of black husbands were in their homes with their wives raising children. You fast forward after they interjected welfare state policies and abortion, now we're looking at 75% of black 
children born outside of marriage, the low educational rates, the, 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 the high crime rates, the abortion rates, the welfare rates, the AIDS rates, everything ill is hitting this particular population simply because of Margaret Sanger's plan to annihilate this population, their families, and make sure that they did not have success in this country. Ro Do you hear that, leftists? The Republicans aren't the racists. You're the ones trying to wipe out a whole species of humans. Well, and before that, the leftists were the ones that split the country in half so they could maintain the right to keep those people and en enslaved. Right. This yeah. And then as soon as they couldn't own the babies, they wanted to kill them. Yep. That, well, that's that, it. That's They're disproportionately killing African-American babies in the African-American communities. I mean, yeah, that, that's where most of the Planned Parenthood uh, facilities are. Right. Like they just said, low income or or uh, minority communities. Because Margaret Sanger secretly wanted to get rid of the Negro population. So I, I will actually say the, the, the documentary so far, it's already converted me. Like, I think abortion should absolutely be 100% legal. Yeah, for, for the leftists. But there should only be one method of abortion, and that's euthanasia. <laughs> other. What? If a woman wants an abortion, we give it to her by euthanizing the mother. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you get it. But after that, wow. <laughs> you're going with. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I agree with that, but I mean, oh, you know. That's pretty extreme. But, I mean, I think it's murder, but. There is extreme um, hold, situations hold on, on the rare occasion the mother's life is at, in danger. Okay, we we uh, execute murderers all the time. Why not the worst of the worst? Murderers of babies. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. You, you want that point? You can have it. No, it starts I, I think it should be illegal, except in an extreme situation where the mother is abs is going to die if she, you know, it's just extreme situations. That's the only exception that's that's allowed here in texas it is illegal to kill a child unless it comes to the health does, of the mother i agree if you're into, not does this get into the statistics behind uh the success rate of cesarean i don't think so okay go ahead and play it i'll talk a little bit about that at the end all right had made all of these promises that, you know, if you allow abortion, if you legalize abortion, then, you know, domestic violence is going to decrease, that uh, poverty is going to decrease, that, you know, all of these societal ills are going to essentially go away if you allow women to kill their children. And none of those things have gotten any better. In fact, they've gotten worse. You know, I think about just the eight years that I was at Planned Parenthood and during that time, you know, I definitely would have called myself, a, you know, a feminist and, Care no you know, a, a champion of women. There is not one time in that eight years where a woman came to me for help where I sat down across from her and I said, you know, I'm going to help you today. At Planned Parenthood, we were to turn every telephone call and every client visit into a revenue generating visit. We didn't provide prenatal care. We don't get kickbacks if a woman chooses adoption. So the only way that we can make money on a pregnant woman is to sell her an abortion. And so you basically get a woman into the facility and you wreck her plan. You're really not strong enough to do that. You're not strong enough to be a single mom. You're not strong enough to meet your educational goals. You're not strong enough to meet your career goals. So I'm gonna take advantage of your vulnerability and I'm gonna convince you to give me money to kill your baby. That's not strength. That's not giving her resources. That's really the opposite of what feminism is. And so I guess the question then becomes, why isn't Planned Parenthood doing that? Because they're an abortion empire. It's $1.7 billion corporation. And they're selling abortion. They're literally profiting off of the deaths of children and the pain, the most painful moments of a woman's life.
I think the concern that a lot of pro-choice people have about the safety of those seeking abortion and the possibility that people would illegally procure abortions to their own detriment is concerning. That is a concern of the pro-life movement, and that should be a concern of all of us. I think it's also important to understand the truth of the situation, as made clear by Dr. Bernard Nathanson in his writings about his work in the early pro-choice movement, that the number of maternal deaths that occurred prior to Roe v. Wade was similar to the number of deaths that occur in legal abortion to this day. To this day, people die procuring legal abortion. That hasn't changed. Abortion rights activists have been pushing the claim that thousands of women will die every year in unsafe abortions if abortion is illegal. Bernard Nathanson said they sat around a table and just from whole cloth made up that information, which of course has become a central talking point, namely that if we ban abortion, abortion will be driven underground and women will die. It's absolutely not true. When women have an abortion, there is actually an increased risk of maternal mortality. We know this from countries that have very comprehensively looked at the association between abortion and maternal mortality. From myself, as sitting on the HHS Secretary's Advisory Committee for Infant and Maternal Mortality, the maternal mortality statistics in the United States are flawed, especially when you want to ask how they're associated with abortion, because states are not mandated or required to report abortions. So there's gonna be a whole state like California that we have no idea how many abortions they even do. And we definitely don't know how many are associated with maternal mortality. And so we have to look at other countries that have very comprehensively looked at the association between abortion and maternal mortality. And we know that there is a three times higher risk. I think it's very problematic that big abortion continues to tout numbers that are inaccurate as it relates to maternal mortality rates prior to Roe and the reasons associated with that. We have seen top level Planned Parenthood executives make the claim, the false claim, that thousands of women died um, trying to procure illegal abortions prior to Roe v. Wade. The pro-abortion movement has been lying. It is not just surprising, it's heartbreaking for people. But to give them that opportunity to learn so that they can change, that's what we have to do. Because again, they're being given every single day through social media, traditional media, school system, whatever, they're being given lies about abortion. Abortion has been seen as a sacrosanct right. And so anything you do to regulate it, anything you do to keep uh, murderous abortionists accountable or ones that are not following even basic healthcare guidelines, no, that's taboo. And that's why Kermit Gosnell in Philadelphia was allowed to operate for decades before he was finally raided by the FBI. And they found that he had been killing born alive infants. He actually killed women. He was uh, doing all kinds of medical malpractice. And there were reports on this. There were tips on this being regularly given to police, to the health department, and it was never acted on. They looked the other way. Why? Because he was an abortionist. And if you're an abortionist, you are regulated less in most states than a nail salon. I think so often if we haven't been affected by something, if it's something that we don't think about. But what I've realized as I learned that I survived an abortion is that there is a face and a name and a story for the unborn child. I had the opportunity story. to meet my birth mother. Um, I, I got to thank her and, and see who I looked like. And um, in the midst of that, I, I gave her a gift and she opened a card that I gave her with a gift and it said, thank you for choosing life for me. And I'll never forget that moment as my birth mother broke down into tears and said, I didn't. Claire, I was 13 when I was pregnant with you. Um, I was alone. My mother told me that the best thing for me was to have an abortion, and so I did. I had a D&E dismemberment abortion, and a few weeks later, I went back to the doctor, and the doctor said that I had been pregnant with twins, and that one had been aborted, but that you had survived my abortion. And 
gosh, I never imagined. I never imagined that I would sit face to face with my birth mother and find out that not only had I been the type of person that was affected by abortion, but I was a twinless twin in the name of choice that um, her abortion made sense of me being born at three pounds with a dislocated hip and club feet and um, a lifetime of complications, um, including visiting the children's crippled hospital as a child. And so I realized in that moment that everything I believed about abortion was wrong. The problem is that so many women are harmed by abortion, but the shame keeps them from coming forward and saying, I, something bad happened to me. Part of my baby was left inside of me, or I was left laying on an abortion clinic table for five hours while they were trying to pack my uterus full of gauze because I was almost bleeding to death on a table and they refused to call the ambulance. I think that the pro-death community has always used women for their own purposes. I think that they use anyone for their own purposes. When I was first deep diving of the abortion industry, researching it, I came across a book called Lime 5 by Mark Kretcher. And this book was basically a compendium of all of these different cases of sexual abuse cover-up at abortion clinics, abuse of women at abortion clinics, um, abortionists just committing horrible illegal activity, unethical activity that he had painstakingly documented over a period of two decades. And that was when I started to think, can we document this happening in Los Angeles? Because I was a college student um, in, in LA. Can we document this at the abortion clinics here? Is it happening here? And that inspired our first investigative report. I wanted to test Mark's theory that he had, that abortion is, uh, sexual abuse is covered up in abortion clinics across the country. So I went into two abortion clinics in Los Angeles, two Planned Parenthoods, posing as an underage girl with a much older boyfriend. She said, okay, I'm you know, 15 years old, he's much older, he's 23. This is a clear case of statutory rape in California. What do I do? And the first Planned Parenthood clinic I walked into, one in Santa Monica, told me that I should change my age on the paperwork so that it would not trigger reporting and I could get a secret abortion. And then the second abortion clinic I went into, in Los Angeles, same thing. They said that they were not gonna report anything. And she sat there persuading me to have an abortion. If we keep this conversation, I'm gonna have to talk to my manager. And yeah, he's gonna get in trouble. <laughs> but in order to get the, I'm not gonna tell anybody. Well, you know, yeah, I mean, he's over such and such and you can do statutory rape and whatever, but it's gonna be in the papers. So most people will threaten stuff and don't go through with Okay. I don't care how old he is. It's, uh, you know, how they essentially keep the doors open. You know, Planned Parenthood parades around as this great benefactor to the masses, but they are looking for the most effective ways to make money. The supposedly pro-women organization, Planned Parenthood, is at sexual abuse of little girls. And these girls are being taken by their abusers or sent by their abusers for secret abortions and then sent back to their abusers. And the one person who's supposed to intervene, a health professional, and make a report and, and trigger the steps for rescuing that girl and helping her, intervening, is, is not only not doing their job, they're actively participating in the abuse. You know, I, I remember a telling phone call with a detective from the L.A. Police Department working on child sexual abuse cases. And he said in all his years, his decades working in LAPD, he'd never gotten a phone call from an abortion clinic. No abortion clinic had ever reported suspected abuse when they're the ones dealing with pregnant girls, young girls who are involved in sexual activity. And instead of flagging, oh, is there an older guy involved? What's your situation? Is there abuse going on? They just sell an abortion and send her on her way. And this kind of goes back to one of the major lies that Nathanson and, and his pro-abortion colleagues told, which was that 
legal abortion is good for women. Abortion is a solution to women's problems. Uh, women will be safer, their health will be better if they can access abortion. This is simply not true. There are serious risks of abortion to women. And even in cases where there aren't kind of health side effects, psychological side effects, long-term consequences, uh, women are actually not better off if their best solution is to kill their child, right? It pits women against their own children. It turns their the, that most vulnerable human relationship into an antagonistic relationship between enemies. And women are not better off as a result of that. I think it comes down to the, the real heart of the issue is this question. What is the life in the womb? Is it a human being? Is it human? Even a survey that was done of over 5,000 biologists when they asked, when does human life begin? Over 95% of them said that human life begins at the moment of conception. And when you look at actually who are these individuals, well, the majority of them are actually liberal, Democrat, non-religious, and pro-choice. So even they know that, that from the moment of conception, that is a human being, a living human being. When I'm weighing the hard edges of this debate, I recognize that a hard edge of our side is that we need to be concerned about the repercussions for women in a scenario where they're not able to procure a legal abortion. But I also recognize that the hard edge of the other side is mass genocide. We're talking about more than 60 million babies killed by abortion. And we know that many of them, thousands and probably millions, were past the age of viability and that some have been born alive and become victims of infanticide. That is the hard edge of the pro-choice side. Early in my career, I was an abortionist. I performed over 700 abortions that went on for about a year and a half and um, it all came to a, a halt on a Saturday morning. I remember it so well. I was doing abortions. Um, we would do 20, 25 abortions on a Saturday morning. And the last patient of that day was a little 16 year old. And usually when we do an abortion, um, up to, and we were only doing them up to about 13 weeks at that time. Uh, there's only a tablespoon, maybe three or four tablespoons of amniotic fluid that come out when we uh, do the procedure. This was different. Uh, there was probably a quart, maybe a quart and a half of amniotic fluid that came out uh, as I was doing it. And uh, then the, uh, there was a lot of blood. And then it happened the event that changed everything. Uh, the baby kicked me. Now you might think, here I was doing abortions for a year and a half, and I would see the products that I was pulling out of the uterus, the broken limbs, the torsos, the, the head, all the pieces of those babies. And that didn't really move me. It didn't change my mind. And it was only then when I examined the abdomen and realized that this pregnancy was much further along than I had anticipated. It, it, it really hit home, I think, with a, uh, the fact that I was taking a life. She had to be taken to the hospital and um, removed the baby was removed in pieces and a gruesome procedure that was the last abortion i ever did um, they use language such as just throw it away throw you know flush it down the toilet i mean there is just there is complete disregard and disrespect for the unborn child and they go out of their way to misinform and and sideline the facts and the science that 
demonstrate that this is a real human being that is, if you go through with this, you will be killing an innocent life. Because in Planned Parenthood's ideology, an abortion is always best. It doesn't matter your situation. If you're poor, if you're raped, if you're abused, abortion is your ticket. And that's our job. We wash our hands of caring for you afterwards. And that's what's happening in Washington, D.C. right now. The case of brave pro-life activists who intercepted bodies of 115 children outside Cesare Santangelo's abortion clinic. And is anyone investigating? Has D.C. police, when, when the bodies of these infants were found outside his abortion clinic, including the bodies of five babies who looked to be, some of them nearly full term, five babies who were between 20 to 40 weeks old, one little girl whose neck was cut and her brain removed, another baby born in Cal in the amniotic fluid sac, two babies that were viciously dismembered, babies maybe 28, 30 weeks old, and then another little baby boy who looked to be full term according to some medical experts. No signs of apparent trauma on his body. How did he die? How did he die? Was he, did, was he delivered alive, like Cesare Santangelo has admitted he would do, and then drowned or just left to die? These are the questions that law enforcement should be investigating, and yet they are not. Who would have guessed 50 years ago when people were promising the courts resolve this question? Or people now saying, oh, settled law. But actually, the political alignment of the entire country is not built around war and peace. It's not built around the size of the welfare state or tax policy. Everybody has opinions, but on life, it's like the Red Sea. I think that tells us something. We need a better answer than the one we've got now. People often say to me, well, Claire, don't you, don't you think women should, should have the right to choose what they do with their own body? And, and I always say, yeah, absolutely I do. But the problem here is that I wasn't my birth mother's body. There was a separate human being inside of my birth mother's body, and that was me. And so women, yes, absolutely, they should have the right to do what they want with their body, but not when it's at the expense or the death of a child like me, like my twin. The most prominent advocates of abortion will say that if women don't have a right to abortion, that they will be uh, second-class citizens at best. They will not be able to express themselves sexually as men do and at the same time participate in the equal economic and civic life of the nation. Um, that is simply false, demonstrably false. But it is the most important normative argument that abortion rights supporters have. And by the way, if Roe v. Wade and Planned Parenthood versus Casey are overturned, it will not result in the criminalization of abortion in America. It will return to the political branches the freedom that, by the way, is enjoyed by nations around the world, including countries that are much more progressive than we are. Countries, by the way, who have much more restrictive laws on abortion than we do. Countries like France and, and, uh, and, and Germany and, and uh, you know, the Netherlands. I mean, pick a country and they have restrictions on abortion that we don't have in our law by operation of Roe and Casey. All overturning Roe and Casey will do will kick the matter back to the political branches where we can finally reason together in the political sphere about how best to protect women and children and families. And so the claim that women will be subjugated like the Handmaid's Tale if the court overturns Roe and Casey simply is false. People are starting to recognize that something has gone terribly wrong. All the data is showing that people know that our civil society is unraveling. So they're looking for why. And I think that's true of all of us. We understand good and evil. And I would say that if the average person could see abortion through my eyes just one time, just one time, that the polls would indicate a high percentage of the American public would oppose abortion. And so there's so much work to be done. Even if Roe versus Wade is overturned, even if every single state was to ban abortion, there would still be women who are torn who are afraid to, to parent, who need resources, who need help, who need support, who need adoption. And we would, as the movement, need to wrap our arms around them and help them. I hope that someday we will look back on abortion as um, a horrific thing and wonder how we ever let this happen. But I think even if we do reach that time when all of us are willing to recognize that this was deeply unjust and that it, it should never have happened, 
we'll have to remember the history of it. We can't forget why this happened and, and we shouldn't let it happen again. It's a, uh, a horrible atrocity against vulnerable members of our community. Um, and who knows who could be next. Yeah, that was pretty deep. Yeah, I. Well, wow. yeah, know. abortion is sick. It 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 uh, reaffirms my opinion that abortion should only be uh, granted by euthanizing the mothers. <laughs> yeah, I, I I see where you're coming from. I'm not going to disagree with you, but I, I had I, a I had yeah. a buddy that said uh, the guy that I work with. He said that. Uh, basically the same thing that you did but he was like okay if you want if you want an abortion you get one but if you come back for another one you're gonna you're gonna die with her with it with the with the child and i was like oh that's that's pretty uh <laughs> that's pretty steep but yeah I, I kind of agree i'm like but yeah, so the other the other videos that are on here this uh the lady who worked for Planned Parenthood, the doctor who was an abortionist, then this lady right here, that that little bit of story that you heard, it, it, it was a little more intense than that. Uh, her mother's mother made her, made her mother go get an abortion, but she told her that she, because she was too, her mother was too far along to get an abortion and they lied to the abortionist to get the abortion. And at the time they had only thought that there was only one child. And then she had the abortion and the, her mom was still having complications. And it was like a couple of weeks later, she went back and they're like, oh, you still have a baby in there. We need to get it out. And they sent her to another place to come to find out that she was way too far along and they they had to take her out of the womb for her even to, to survive because her, her mom wouldn't have survived either. So they had she was born premature. And so she got she got really messed up during the abortion. Obviously she had uh clubbed feet and all that stuff. So and then these other black ladies, I believe, uh is this lady uh she was going to get an abortion and i uh, i believe something spoke to her she was saying that like god spoke to her and told her to to leave the planned parenthood clinic and uh i mean we can watch them if you want but yeah uh they tried to get her to stay and have the abortion and she said no i'm i'm out of here so, I mean, I don't know if you guys want to watch it, we can, but. Yeah, I just, I just find it fascinating how every abortion proponent was not aborted. Right. Yeah. Everyone. <laughs> every, yeah. Well, that's what Reagan said. I noticed everyone who's fighting for abortion is still alive. Yeah. Well, in most cases, it comes down to self-responsibility. Yes, we're animals, but we have self-control. And if you're not willing to take the responsibility of having a child, then don't have sex. Exactly. And that's what sex is. It's the creation of life. Right. So, but <laughs> okay, to, to push back on your we're all animals, the thing that separates us from animals and beasts are that uh, we have moral standards. Yeah. And you never see an animal trying to kill its baby, right? <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah actually well, do it not at most least, not most lions at least young. not in the womb anyways that's for certain yeah not in the womb yeah yeah there, there are animals that do kill their young uh yeah. but yeah that's 
But anybody who's had a teenager understands that a little bit. <laughs> Shut up, Rob. <laughs> You're such a douche. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. It's just to me, it's and the women that argue that it is the woman's choice and the man has no say in it. I'm sorry, the man helped create that child, so he should have some kind of say in it. it is his child? I mean, that's one of the reasons I waited till I was in my 30s before I ever had sex is because before then I wasn't willing to take the risk, even with condoms, birth control. There are still that small chance she can get pregnant. And I was, and I said, you know, I'm not ready to take the responsibility of having a child. I always knew I wanted to be a father, but I was not ready for the responsibility. So I said, I'm not going to risk it. Even if it's a 0.1% chance that she could get pregnant. And the fact is, if she got ever got pregnant and had an abortion, I don't know I could live with myself knowing that a child I helped create was murdered. Okay. And also, you know, uh, they all, I like how they're always like, it's my body, my choice. The choice starts at spreading your legs. You both know that once you do that, once you do do that act, that act in itself is always, there's always going to be the possibility of life because that's what the act is for. Pleasure yeah. is not the reason we have sex. It is a secondary uh, result and it's a good one, but it's not why we as humans or even as animals have sex. So the well, choice you know. is at the time that you guys decide to take the, you want a choice, you have the choice to sleep with the man, have unprotected sex, adoption, uh, adoption, parent, yeah. adoption or parenthood. Those are all choices. And the choice starts with spreading your legs. Well, and you know, like I've mentioned several times, my wife is from China and I know how liberal they are with their abortion policy. I mean, pushing this one child policy, which is now mm -hmm. gone. I mean, right. they, they're pushing for people to have larger families because they have a major population issue. Mm -hmm. You know, they're losing their population. But I had a conversation with her before we got engaged that if we get pregnant, abortion is off the table. There is no option for abortion because I'm not willing to have sex with somebody or to marry someone if there's any chance that we could have an abortion. So I had that conversation with her before we got engaged because I was not willing to take the chance of, of sleeping with someone and having a relationship with someone if she was willing to murder a child. Right. Rob? Well, Rob, are you awake yet? Yeah, no, I'm awake. I'm just you know for me it's uh like tough uh having been in the situation with uh two life of mother threatening situations um the first one was an ectopic pregnancy and that's that not an abortion no so that's it there's no way that that will ever be viable Right. But I mean, I, and on that, but like literally on that situation, like they don't even consider it abortion medically. So when politicians yeah. talk about it, they're just full of shit. Right. Um, right. The other, the other one, it was uh, there. I'm not going to get into it, but there was malformations of the uterus and uh, the way it implanted, it would have like, it could have caused arterial rupture and like a 5% chance that the pregnancy wouldn't have killed the mother and the baby. So, um, so I, so I do have a, a perspective on the, in the case of the mother's health. However, every single um, law, this is the, the, the point that the left lies about when they argue for the safety of the mother, blah, blah, blah. Um, in those cases, uh, like that, where they're literally those two pregnancies, an ectopic pregnancy isn't even in a, a pregnancy because it's never viable. Um, but in those two situations, they wouldn't be covered by a ban. And that's something that the, the left lies about. Um, but um, sorry, on, on that topic, I just get kind of like... Well, you know. Uh, so 
it's I don't know at that point I mean it was even so early and like the 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 losses felt you know what I mean so I I, I don't <sighs> anyway where where they do have uh, abortion bans with the overturning of uh Roe v Wade there's always exceptions and those exceptions are always in there um but like I said they do they do uh, or like they mentioned in there um they completely like leave out the fact that the um the um risk of um uh, uh uh maternal death is higher in abortion than it is in natural childbirth um especially when you consider uh cesarean uh with with, with a c-section um like once the baby is to 20 whatever weeks almost unanimously or like or or sorry like the the topic leaves me frazzled i just can't think <laughs> um but but it's but it's almost like 100 percent that like with a cesarean mother and baby both survive right. so like this the this idea of the the uh, yeah. abortion being the only option to save the mother it, it, it's straight up just a lie i think um the leftists they always try and say that the um the great stain on America is slavery. No, the great stain on America is abortion. Abortion. During the only reason that they push it is to kill black babies. Like I, I, that's it. I I I don't understand. And and like this is like I love Brian. Like he's been my buddy and by my side for fifteen years. But how you think? could be pro killing babies and still human is just beyond me like anybody who advocates for abortion is not a human being you're a sick disgusting person and if you literally think it's okay to murder babies especially considering we know for a fact these babies are being killed even after they're born and you're still okay with Planned Parenthood you're still okay with pushing abortion as a form of uh birth control we don't get to murder people to make up for our mistakes and if you support that you're not a human being like i'm sorry which i which i know you're not saying i'm a i'm a for yeah, any was, of that i was I'm gonna not. say <laughs> <laughs> I, I know my, you weren't i'm just saying people could have interpreted what you were saying yes of, yes when you were saying if you are you're you're no, saying i am and i am not <laughs> no but you sympathize about, for that side of the people is what he's saying <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I, I'm just saying that you still think the people that support this stuff are human beings. I don't, and I agree. But like so we're I, saying, it is only I, time that's abortion. Why say, that's why I say the only legal method of abortion should be euthanization of the mother. But and like we said, the only time abortion should be legal is in those extremely rare occasions that the mother is most likely going to die. And it needs to be earlier on in the pregnancy. Yeah, but don't, but don't even say that because in the case that the yeah. mother is actually going to die and the baby is going yeah. to die, it is not even an abortion. From a medical yeah. perspective, it is not an abortion. It's not considered yep. an abortion. Yes, because Legal. abortion is going no, I agree. and killing the baby. I agree. Uh, 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 a life. But, damn it. I was just, oh, yes. To, to back Brian up a little bit, though, like like abortion like they were saying a lot of these people that support abortion are being lied to and are buying into the lie they don't actually know the truth so i can i can see where brian's coming from i don't necessarily agree with him i think that anybody that even remotely think that it's okay to kill a baby at any stage from conception to <coughs> eight inches up the birthing canal is just evil and i could i can understand where rob says to euthanize the mother but i don't really think that that's a a doable or a moral thing to do uh no. i think the way that, i think the way that it's set up now where we uh where we let the states decide and the people of, of the state that's you know, to vote on what they want, like what happened in Kansas, which totally blew the left's narrative of they're not going to let us have abortions. We're not going to have 
control of our body. They're going to make, they're going to make it illegal throughout the United States blew that out of the water. And it's really a, another reason why the Democrats are losing for the midterm because they tried to make, uh, Roe v. Wade, their number one best-selling topic for voting for Democrats in the min- midterm instead of focusing on, like, crime and inflation and all the stuff that everybody, regardless of whether you're on the left, the right, the middle, we all feel. And so that's why they're they're losing. But I do, I do understand both of your guys' opinion. I'm not for abortion. Uh, from conception to birth or after birth, like what we saw on that video where yep. some babies were being born and their necks cut open and their brains scooped out. That's completely wrong, but I'm not for killing the mother either just because she wanted to have an abortion, but well, I can, I can understand both sides is what I'm saying. Well, I'm like, I, 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 we all agree with is abortion is wrong from conception to birth, but where I agree with you too is once the baby is viable outside the body, if you are, if you are, if you have an abortion, then you should be put up for murder charges. Exactly. I agree with that too. I mean, I think it's murder no matter when, but I absolutely 100%. There's no, there shouldn't be any argument that once the baby is can survive outside the body, that it is that you are, you're a murderer. 100%. Okay, Brian. Okay, Brian so should the, mother who went for the abortion after she gave birth be charged with murder or the doctor yes. or should they both both okay. both once the baby's viable out the body i and i think it shouldn't be illegal at all i think it should be right. completely 100 no, illegal but i think at this point if if the baby could have survived outside the mother then 100 they should be put up on murder charges i mean why do we why do we call it murder of two people when a woman's murdered and she's pregnant but yet right why is it murder if we're allowed to murder that child if the mother doesn't want it i mean if if you're gonna say it's not a life so i can abort it then why is it a life when somebody murders that woman and then say it's you put the person up on two murder charges or three or whatever the mother had in her belly right. in her uterus right. I, I will point out that these days Democrats don't even prosecute mur- attempted murder. So, you know. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> well, that douchebag that ran over the Waukesha people. And, you know, the sad thing about that is he was convicted on all 76 counts and he's just going to end up dying in prison. He, sh- he should be the, the people of Wisconsin should not be paying for that guy to live. But because they don't have the death penalty after Dahmer, or was it before Dahmer that they got rid of the death penalty? I don't know. They kind of screwed up on that one, if you ask me. I think that I think the death penalty is should be on the table in all fifty states. But well, that's and a lot of topic. these, a lot of these people that talk about uh, exceptions for rape and incest. Uh, I think is just is wrong. They don't look at the the statistics that show women are what uh, I've seen statistics showing 150 percent more likely to commit suicide after an abortion, even well, in you, the case of ra- rape and incest. Well, well what is the so statistics it, on rape and incest abortions? Point one percent of abortions. Exactly. So what's 99. That, what's that, Rob? Point one percent of abortions are because of rape. And then no, I point yeah, no, I so agree. nine so ninety nine point nine percent of abortions is birth control, yeah. which is yeah ludicrous. Yeah. I mean rape and incest is just a tiny little part, and I and uh, yes, I knew that, but I'm just saying, even those people that say there should be exceptions for that, even though it's a tiny percent, you know, is what I'm talking is right. I mean, they don't look at the health of the mother either because you the per, the chance of her being so depressed afterwards because she realized she she got rid of this life that was inside her whether she wanted it or not and yes she's going through some tragic situations carrying this child because of the memories of the rape or whatever but she is far more likely to commit suicide if she gives the abortion than not and people who support it will say well that's not true well go look at the statistics well pull which, up the actual statistics and see what it wait, is wait that, Ryan, that brings just, that that brings that brings me to the point. After you're raped, you you can go 
to the police, right? And and mm-hmm. and I understand why someone some women would be reluctant to do that. Yeah, but if you've been raped, you know that there's a chance that you can be pregnant. pregnant so yeah. why don't they have like a pill that you can take for like the morning? After? Yeah, but a lot of them are in a lot of them are in denial. It's it's a mental state. It, they're ashamed and in denial, and and Bullshit. the whole idea of reliving it. Bullshit. <laughs> Yeah, I just I just think they know and they can I, I think every single woman that has been raped needs to yeah. uh, pursue legal action and the one that raped them is the one that needs needs to be needs to be punished for it, not the life that was created. However, there's the morning after pill. If you've yeah, been raped no, I agree. they didn't use pr- protection, the if you take the morning after pill, it's not yeah. gonna it's not gonna destroy any evidence of the rape. So well, I, I- I totally agree that if they've been raped or anything, they should be going and take and, you know, getting in birth control for a morning after, and they don't even have to admit that they were raped. Uh, I think they should. And I think the guy should be prosecuted and thrown into prison and, and, you know, sterilized, but still she, she should take care of what if this does lead to a pregnancy, she shouldn't be waiting months and months down the road to go oh crap i got pregnant from this and now i need to do something about it right as disgusting as it and is. it's not and it's not her fault i, I understand it isn't 100 percent. but 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 neither is it the child's uh, fault uh, for no, being I created that way right well, I mean, you you get fucking high on drugs and alcohol and fucking yeah. go off with three random guys in the car to go and party and and then they call that rape. No, that wasn't rape. That was you fucking set out to have a a gangbang and you got it, and then you called it rape afterwards because oh, oh I was. Man, I don't you. think any. I don't think any of us are going <laughs> to argue with that. I mean, there there's a difference between a woman just calling rape because she got in, put herself in a situation, and then a woman that actually was raped. Right. So like, so like, I mean, I'll I'll, I'll just point out like what they call rape is very convenient what they what they consider a life is very convenient um like if you're drunk you can't consent to sex well then 90 percent of the population of men and women since you know we're all equal the women are committing rape too um on valentine's day for example and on anniversaries then both the men and the women are guilty of rape because they're having sex with inebriated people after they go out for dinner and drinks. Right. And now they're saying that uh, you can revoke consent. I'm like, what, what, is, what the hell does that mean? Revoke. So you could consent that, to having that, sex with me, but then the wait, day after. So you revoked consent. Right. <laughs> Paps blue ribbon, helping fat, ugly chicks have sex for over. Oh, geez. Years. <laughs> God. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, closely affiliated with Mad Dog Twenty Twenty and Boone's Farms. Yep, Boone Boone's very <laughs> <Jeez. laughs> Wow, Ru- Rufalin helping <laughs> helping ugly men get laid wow. <laughs> since nineteen oh eight. Wow! Wow! Uh, oh. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 here's here's my thing on abortion. They try and make some really good arguments in support of abortion. Every and genocide so. that ever happened, they made some really good arguments. But if you bother looking behind the argument, it's obvious bullshit. Yeah, it all just and falls apart. The real, yeah, the real purpose of abortion is killing black and brown people. We, we can't ignore that 70% of abortions happen to black and brown people. The 30% of white babies that are aborted are just collateral damage in the war to destroy people with melanin in their skins. Well, and di- and the disabled people, like when you when you're pregnant, like my wife during both of my daughter's uh, pregnancies, they wanted to test for silly stuff like uh, autism or what you know when you get tests to see if there's, there could be right. And I'm like, well, what? Why do I want to get that test for? Well, it, 
It's so then we can decide where we want to go from there. Well, what do you mean where you want to go from there? You think I want to kill my baby if we find out that there could yeah. be a birth defect? You think that, well, it could be better, you know, for the baby's life. Fuck you. How about you let me decide that for my children, not you? Well, all these how, how, kids with Down syndrome disease, you know, Down yeah, syndrome. And and- I, love, I love the idea that death is better for their life than life. Yeah, right. Well, I mean, you look at what is it, Sweden, who says they've cured autism and their cure was if we test you and you have autism, the understanding is you will have an abortion. So they don't have any autistic kids anymore. But yet all these, you know, all these kids well, Down syndrome, all these parents that have Down syndrome kids say they are the greatest child they've ever had. They are such a gift from God and they're angels on earth. They are wonderful. Yeah, they're going to need a little extra help and they're going to need, you know, for the rest of their life. But that's what we're here for. I mean, the idea of we solved it. We're just going to murder all of them is just disgusting. Bro, my oldest daughter is is uh, on the spectrum of autism. She's yeah. She the, the the best part about her is she is brutally honest, and that's oh, just yeah. that's just the way most autistic people are. They're just yeah. Bru- they don't know to lie. I mean, she will, yeah. she will lie if, you know, she was trying to get away <laughs> with something, but oh yeah, <laughs> like any she kid. is usually brutally honest. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm sorry. I, if, if it was me and my wife I, got pregnant, I wouldn't even have the test done. I'd be like, whatever they are, they are. I don't care. Mm-hmm. They're my child. Elon Musk is on the autism spectrum. Yep. He's got Asperger's. Yeah. Absolutely. He is. And look at what he's done with his life, <laughs> richest yeah. man on earth. But, but even, but even that, like that's a, that's that's more bullshit that the left lies about and hides and everything else. Like the um, the fact is, um, there's a direct correlation to the uh, increased occurrence of autism and Down syndrome and all this uh, with the uh, leftists pushing women to have babies later and later. Yeah. And I, my question is. How many of these, and I don't know that there's been any research into it. I'm actually going to take a look and see if I can find anything on it. My question is, how many of these like first-time mothers in their 40s that are having such high percentages of their, their, their babies um, uh, be autistic and have Down syndrome and other birth defects? I, I wonder how many of them had abortions. And that's right. why they're having babies so late. Yeah. The increased occurrence of uh, Down syndrome and autism is actually a result of the abortions. Another side effect that they're not tracking because they're not making the correlation. Well, I've seen those studies that show that uh, having an abortion increases the chance of uh, having children with autism or Down syndrome. Okay, yeah. Send me that. And it makes it. And it makes it more difficult for them to get pregnant. Like another point that I think you were trying to make. like I know the damage it does the it does the the conception processes and a lot of times it winds up sterilizing the women, but shit, this is the side that believes in like literally chemi- chemically castrating boys and chopping their shit off so they can pretend to be a girl, or like giving double mastectomies and hysterectomies to and cutting off part of your girl. forearm to add a phallus. Yeah. So yeah, I mean. I just don't understand how anybody can not say that these people are evil. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a stab at Brian. <laughs> no, I, fine I, with me. I, not all not all liberals are in support of abortion. Yeah. Every last one of you bastards on the left is evil. Okay? So, um, it, it's like grabbing a gun, pointing at somebody, and pulling the trigger. You don't know if they're going to die, but unless you're a complete idiot, you have the ability to get the information to know what's going to happen. Well, and when you point a gun at someone, your intent is to kill them, generally. Maybe not. Maybe you've never held a gun. Maybe you thought it was a toy gun. Blah, blah, blah. You you know what I mean? Yeah. My my point is, you're, you're still an evil piece of shit. People that get abortions, promote abortions, perform abortions. You're all evil. Okay. So we'll leave the mother alone. Can we start executing the abortionist doctors that have committed 
murder and genocide like hundreds of times? Can we kill those bastards? 70, 70,000 abortions. Well, <laughs> I, mean, I, was, I mean, I understand and I'm with you on that to a, I guess, to a certain extent. Because, like, then does that mean that we got to go back and kill that abortionist that uh, had a change of heart when he realized that you what, what he was doing was evil? Because he hey. said that he would, oh, no. he, if he never, if he never, if he, if that, he said if that incident had never happened, he would have just kept on killing, you know, babies. I, I think as sick and as disgusting as it is, it's still legal so now at this point we have to leave them to god to do whatever he's going to do with them right. i mean well le technically legally he is not doing anything wrong legally if he's now, in the morally state of texas and he is morally and being a human being he's a sick piece of shit if they're a medical doctor they're committing uh, committing medical malpractice yes multiply by 700 times they should have at least life in prison for 700 instances of medical malpractice. I don't care if you change your mind later. A fucking pedophile yes. who stop. A pedophile who changes his mind later about raping little babies doesn't get off on raping the little babies because he changed his fucking point of view later. So why should a baby murderer get off because he changed his mind about whether or not it was murder later? Why should so why should somebody committing genocide get off because he decided later, oh, hey, maybe genocide isn't good. Like, I mean, since that's really what we're talking about is white doctors murdering black and brown babies. So we need to change the law so it is illegal so he can be put up for murder charges. It's well, already against the law. If you look at the... If you look at the it is against God. No, he said if, against the law. It's already... If you look at medical ethics laws... Every single doctor who has ever been performed a uh, abortion. abortion intentionally performed a medical procedure known to cause loss of life. Every single so one. get a judge. So get a judge that'll rule that way. Well, first we need a prosecutor with the guts to charge somebody uh, that performs abortions with murder. So I mean, the, Dem I the Democratic bureaucrats. That made all these HIPAA like regulations, like and a lot of them not voted on. A lot of the like they were given authorization, then they wrote a bunch of stuff in there. Um, a lot of these regulations and laws that were pushed by uh, liberals, anyways. The whole reason why they pushed it is for exactly cases like this, um, because now you can't even like the the police can't get the information. To pursue actual crimes against nature, God, and humanity. I mean, I, I agree, Rob, that every single doctor in the Western world has the Hippocratic Oath to do no harm to a living being. And they've broken that over and over again. Well, find a law, find a judge that will go will and a prosecutor that'll go after this and get them sentenced to murder. But the fact is we don't right now. I, we, we need we need to either find them or change the laws that are in the books too. So we, so it's easier to do. I, I think right. we're, I think we're, I think we're making it. Wait, wait a minute. I think we're making it. Okay. Go ahead, Rob. Sorry. I'll get to it. After right. Abbott, um, DeSantis, you know what, after this election, we're going to have what 42 freaking governors that are Republicans or not 42, I hope 32 so. Republicans. I hope so. Right. You all claim to be you all claim to be pro-life conservatives. Every freaking one of you needs to uh, uh, direct and require that your attorney general file charges against every abortion doctor for the violation of their the legal practice laws. And if you don't, you're not a conservative, you're not pro-life, you're a freaking liar, and you should resign from office. Okay, so I think we're. Uh, I, I made a I made a I made a Facebook post not too long ago that Rob, you kind of pushed back on me against, and I I understand that, but I think we're kind of making a case for um, morality police. Just no, just, just saying. No, no. So no, this these are literally doctors who attend. That's not morality. That's murder, and, and and it's not about morality. So so no, morality police would say, okay, well, 
you know, the Bible says uh, gay sex is a sin, so we're going to throw you in jail for being gay. Yeah, no. Okay. Uh, you, you get what I'm saying? Uh, now, no, we do, I get what you're saying. We do actually regulate morality, though. I mean, like, if you steal, you go to jail. Um, I actually think we should uh, enforce the laws regarding uh, uh, adultery because most states actually have laws on the books where if you commit adultery, you go to jail. Well, sodomy, um, sodomy as well, and sodomy isn't just anal sex. Nah, right, yeah, well, hey, stay away from my blowjobs. No, I'm kidding. Exactly, but that's sodomy. Damn, bro, damn. I'm, I'm just, say, I, I'm just saying. I mean, no, no, I, 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 no, I get what you're saying. That's why I made the joke. But um, no, so I, I mean that that's kind of exactly my point. Is like. It's not about policing morality. There is no moral question when it comes to murder. We already have laws regarding murder on the books. We already have laws regarding when a doctor intentionally performs uh, um, uh, procedures that have like oh, an assured effect of uh, killing the patient. Like that already exists. And the baby is one of the two patients in that room. But there's, no, the doctor- there's nobody policing that. Yeah, that's my point. So morality, please. No, but that's my point. And every single one of these Republican governors is in charge of their um, attorney general. And they need to start telling their state attorney generals to prosecute. And if you don't, you get you're you're fired in front of the Supreme Court. And then we'll really see. But they need to start the prosecutions. They need to get the process going. No, and that that would be great. I think all of us would be like, yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, yeah, anything the, to stop this cause of murders, but until they're willing to do it, it's you know. But Here's the problem, a, I think, conservative politicians are just lip service. They just want the power, and they'll never actually do what it takes to solve the problem. Exactly. Well, we've been, exactly and we've said why this we many need, times. Exactly we've said why that we many need, times. All these, all these republic. A lot of us don't recognize ourselves as Republicans. I know you're libertarian, but a lot of us don't recognize, don't even register as Republican because we're tired of the politicians saying what we believe, talking about what we believe, agreeing with us, and then they get into office and they don't follow through. Right. So anyway, I I think that I think they did a great job, like uh, on the uh, movie. So thanks, Michael Knowles and. Um, uh, oh, by the way, guys, make sure to subscribe. Make sure to subscribe. Follow us. I'm starting to put more links so you can actually message us directly. Uh, support us if you like. Um, I'm also going to be like making sure to put our uh, Rumble page and all of the links uh, because we are going to be going into some topics they absolutely are not going to let us discuss on the F YouTube, uh, especially, um, you know, uh, uh Dr. Uh, Fuckface and uh, the Voldemort virus. Uh, we're going to have one of those. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, so make sure you subscribe, not just wherever you're listening. Make sure you subscribe on uh, uh, Rumble. If you uh, don't get a chance to watch the whole video, that's fine. Go over to Spotify, subscribe to us there. You can finish up watching or listening to the shows on there. Um, just make sure to subscribe so you can keep following us and hit the notification bell so you can follow it. Um, feel free to comment us. And if you disagree with us, send us an email. We will put you on the show. Or Hands comment down. on the or comment on the blue. Or tube. just read your comment. Yeah. Hmm. Well, no, like literally, like so you can communicate. I literally created a, a email. Email. Yeah. Yes, comment. But if you want to come on the show. You will. You can come on the show. I am not afraid to talk face to face with somebody that I disagree with. So if you're really that passionate, come on board. Right, and we're not we're not terrible people. I don't think uh, we'll treat you with dignity and respect, so long as you treat us with dignity and respect. Uh, well, I understand. A- we, we all under we all understand that uh rob runs his mouth a lot and uh (laughs) everybody has different and we love him for it yes we do (laughs) Uh, we understand that people have different points of views and uh who knows maybe you could change our mind i highly doubt it but uh you can always try and give it a shot (laughs) hot black ass kettle that's all i'm saying Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) crap
we all run our mouths. That's how we ended up with the podcast is because we we're all getting together and fucking running our mouths anyways. And we anyway, decided, hey, I, we should I probably we make say, money off think, of this. I think we could say that you and Brad run your mouth more than I do. <laughs> yeah, well, that's because half the time I, I you're be still quite, asleep. I could be pretty quiet. Yeah, I can be I was pretty quiet. Say, I'm like, you'd run your mouth too if you were ever well rested. <laughs> well, dude, when I can only get three, four, five hours of sleep, I'm trying to take care of my family here and get an education too. <laughs> and then you can only get three or five, four or five words in while me and Rob are yeah. ranting. <laughs> well, yeah, because I'm not as forceful as you guys. I'm like, I try to get in there and it's like, no, nope, you guys aren't letting me. So I'll just hang back. <laughs> That's where you need to reach down between your legs, grab your testicles. <laughs> remember that they're there, and that you're a man. It's like, <laughs> shut up. Stop well, talking. That we don't get anywhere and when we're all trying to talk over each other <laughs> uh, brian, brian so uh send me send me your uh wife's email so i can tell her she needs to uh, grab your junk every now and then to remind you you're a man um <laughs> hey I'll, if if it'll convince her to do it i'll send it to you <laughs> <laughs> go for it oh, that's terrible she doesn't grab your balls ever Oh no, I'm not saying she never does, oh, but oh, you know, okay. what guy doesn't want them to grab them more often? Come yeah. on. <laughs> well, I mean, not like squeeze them, just you know. Grab, no, no, no. Say, hey, these are here for here. a reason. <laughs> more playful than anything. Come on. <laughs> you know what? Okay, so so um, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna like the gal that's gonna be editing these videos. I'm like totally i'm gonna tell her she needs to get like a full screen like alarm off the rails off the rails off the rails <laughs> so far like, she can just throw it in for eventually live streaming she can like do it to get us back on track <laughs> <laughs> throw it on there and just flash it <laughs> oh, a little siren yeah it's a little toot yeah i thought i on, honestly i think um I think a lot of abortions would be uh, banned if they just are not banned, but a lot of abortions wouldn't happen if they simply pass one simple law. In order to get an abortion, you have to watch the miracle of life. Well, I, I think well, watching what the life actually is inside the body. Well, yeah, no, well, I, there, there's a there's uh, a re they, there's a reason why Planned Parenthood doesn't do ultrasounds. And that exactly. reason is because most women, when they see that life in their womb, change their mind. Yeah, which is why Glenn Beck has set up a a, a foundation for where you can go and donate uh, to provide ultrasounds for women who can't afford them because it, it does save lives. But also, I think if the women were shown a video of an abortion being performed, yeah. They would probably change their mind as well. No, absolutely, one hundred percent. Yeah, you know who surprised me? Like I, I started watching a, a little bit of their uh, content, and, and he speaks about abortion too, and like just how vile and wrong it is. Charlie oh, Kirk. Oh, Charlie Kirk. Like, Charlie Kirk actually absolutely surprised me. Like I had heard him talk about like. A, a lot of things uh, like particularly like the scam that colleges are um and, and just a lot of conservative values but what i didn't realize until the most recent uh, college campus tour that uh he did was that like how much of a man of god he is and that like caught me yeah. off guard like I, I i i was just shocked like i i found it profound um like that it's really not relevant to the show but like i once again became a pastor and yeah i'm probably the most foul mouth pastor in the history of the world but oh i don't know uh, about that <laughs> you're up there but, though <laughs> but uh so for, so for me that's like powerful that like literally like his he is so he surprised me like the like i mean i knew he had good strong conservative values and like um, he made a point that like nobody who believes in God can support any liberal policy. And if you're conservative, even if you don't think you believe in God, your values are based in Christianity. Like, so I, I, I thought that was an interesting point. But yeah, it really it really surprised me. And, uh, and, and, and on this, like, yeah, 
there there's no way anyone who believes in God believes in Christ can possibly support this. I I I, I think that I think that that's the the allowing the allowing the separation of reality that we're doing all over the place for people's comfort not to offend yeah no you can't be christian and support abortion you can't be christian and support welfare you can't be christian and support so many things like basically every liberal position you can't be like christian and, and i say this because like i mean like even the unitarian church like supports gay marriage and um and abortion and all the f you you guys you're not christian like if you can make justifications for murder you're not and i i, I think it is time i'm not gonna judge people because it's not uh, maybe a little judgy but it's really not my place to judge. <laughs> but, at, but but that being said like yeah i can't say that i'm gonna love the sinner that's my flaw that's my sin i i can't know he like does horrific things but um you know like the 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 sin is repugnant i'm not going to stop calling it out well you can well, judge and it your judgment isn't like judging them like condemning them to hell right because every time you talk to someone you, you have to make a judgment on them otherwise you're just yeah, not going to talk to anybody you're always going to you're always going to judge but it's just like like if you were to say like if you were to say uh okay you had an abortion you're gonna go go to hell that's probably not a judgment that you should probably no that's up to god to somebody right because right and that's where the, that's where i believe that the bible is talking about judge not lest ye be judged right because we always have to make judgments but it's not a judgment of Although, whether what what their uh, soul but, is on that yeah, I mean, you there. There's actually like it actually sounds corny when they say it. Like, but the real Christians are the ones that sound the craziest because they're like, "I love you, but you need to know that what you're doing is a mortal sin." Like, I right. still oh, love you, right? You yeah. know, what I mean? and, and that's but they sound no, crazy and, when they say it. But that's a real Christian, right? No, and and I don't disagree with you. And I, but one thing about being a Christian is forgiveness, and. You know, we believe that God can forgive for anything, but you have to truly be sorry for what you've done. Uh, I mean, it's like, you, as you know, Rob, when I was living down in Houston with you, my uncle was murdered and I left and went up to Anchorage, uh, you know, just shortly after I was down there with you. And honestly, to tell you 100% truth, I hate the act that the guy did murdering my uncle, but I don't hate him. I think what he did was disgusting and I hope he spends the rest of his life in prison, but that's up to God in my, in my beliefs. And in my opinion, that's up to God to judge him for what he did. Right. Hate the sin. Don't hate the sinner. No, oh, I hate and, the sin. I hate what he did. And, and I hate that he took my uncle from us. Uh, Cause he was only in his sixties. He still had a long life to go. And he was very, he was a key part in our family, but I hate the act, but I, I have forgiven the guy who did it and I have left it up to God's hands to decide what his punishment should be once he moves on. So, so do, I think people that like spout all this leftist bullshit, I think they're all false, prof false prophets. I think Hitler qualifies as a false prophet. I think Lenin qualifies <laughs> as a false prophet. Al Zedong qualifies as a false prophet. And I'd say AOC qualifies as a fal false prophet. Che Guevara. Uh, all of these people yeah they're all false prophets and like yeah they're they're to, they're 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 either uh willing uh, knowingly or unknowingly tools of the devil and i'm just like it, we we got to start calling it like that, that that's why like the idea that they're they're human they're not they're they gave up their humanity they sold their souls to the devil like anybody anybody who like advocates for murdering babies and i i don't I don't buy that anybody's that stupid. They don't realize it's a baby because five five years later or even five years before when they were pregnant and they wanted the baby, they're all excited when they start feeling that flutter at six weeks, seven weeks. Yeah. Oh, I can feel it. And they're excited. And then, you know, fast forward two years later, you know, their their boyfriend kicked him to the curb because they got with the, uh, the milkman. And now suddenly the baby's inconvenient and it's not a life, no bullshit.
I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> but the but the people engaging in abortion, ninety percent of the time, the baby was conceived through immorality anyway. So like, yeah. I'm not. Right. We need to stop. We need to stop pretending that they're not just bad people to begin with. They're they're murdering babies because they were bad people. Right. Most of them, most of them, not all, most. <laughs> and the advocating for abortion, they're eugenicists, they're racists. That's well, why they're advocating. 99.9% 9 of them are okay. exactly what you said. <laughs> so. and, 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 and the fact that these people like make the lie about bodily autonomy, well, this is the side of the aisle that proved they don't care about bodily autonomy. When they well, oh, I'm I, I almost started talking Voldemort virus, when they so. when they, uh, when they forced when they forced <laughs> medications on us. Stop. Yeah, we're not gonna Stop. talk about yeah. we're 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 not gonna talk about any of that. Not 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 in this video because this video is gonna be on all platforms. But when we do talk about it, um, in two weeks we're gonna be talking about it. We're gonna go full on on Doctor um, uh, uh, Doctor Capital F. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Yeah, Falsy. yeah, yeah. The the oh shoot, sorry. Um, <laughs> we are, we are going to be talking. I can about, laugh because uh, I know you didn't fall, even though it looks like it. <laughs> yeah, it always looks like your chair broke out from oh. under you and you went down. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're we're gonna um we're gonna be talking about Doctor F off. We're gonna be talking about the Voldemort virus, and we're gonna be talking about the happy shots. So, um. But we're going to be doing it on Rumble and Spotify. So, um, yeah. So uh, don't I? I almost I almost stepped on that landmine. Um, but we do want to make sure that the message is getting out to as many people as possible. That's why we're kind of. We should wrap up the show here pretty quick. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. That's 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 the reason I want I want the people watching this to understand. We are attempting to self censor a little bit. Because as much as we all three believe in free speech and being able to say anything we want, um, we want the message to get out. So if we have to dance a little bit on specific issues to make sure that we stay on YouTube, which has our biggest reach right now for all the platforms, like if that changes later, great. But for now, that's our biggest reach. That's why we're going to dance a little. We already got a strike on our original uh, Roe v. Wade video. So we're kind of dancing on some of the topics um and, and we're coming up with euphemisms just to kind of like kind of hint at stuff but and, uh, and the reason that we got struck down was because of the related topic yeah yeah because it well and the funny thing is like what you what was said did not disagree with anything on the cdc website so it was absolutely ridiculous it was just yeah. that we um yeah. Anyway, so, um, yeah, that being said, like, Brian, go ahead, wrap off, uh, wrap up with your overall thoughts on the movie. <laughs> I thought it was a good movie, powerful. There was some pretty uh, intense moments uh, there that, you know, I can understand why Brad got pretty emotional there, he said, uh, first few times he saw it. Uh, the fact is murder, it, it is murder uh taking out the you know killing the un our most vulnerable uh is murder and there, it, it should be illegal and i know it's against the hippocratic oath i don't know how anybody could actually do it because they swear not to hurt harm bring harm to any life it's it, it just it's disgusting uh it's wrong uh, the fact is we yes we are animals like rob was saying in a previous show but the difference is we do have self-control and you have to realize that sex is the creation of life. That's the whole purpose of sex is to create new life. So if you're willing to take, if you're willing to have sex and you need to be willing to take the responsibility of have of that life that you're trying to create, whether you're taking steps to try not to have that, well, take that steps, but understand that it's not a hundred percent. The only hundred percent way is not to have sex. So, understand that you can create life and if you're going to take the responsibility for it and don't murder it because you've created that 
right? And I'll just say, I, I liked the movie. It it was it was a uh, it, it really hit hit me in the heart and uh, got me emotional. But I've seen all all the uh, extras too with the interviews of the people because they have videos of the people. You know, just when they sat down and just talked to those people, there's uh, five to eight minute clips of the interviews of the people that they were that they had on the show. So it it was really great. It was touching. It didn't change my mind at all, really, about how I thought of abortion. I mean, I used to be of the mind that, you know, I would never ask a woman to have an abortion and I would never tell a woman that she couldn't have an abortion. But now, as I've grown older and, you know, have had children of my own, I'm I, I noticed that uh, abortion is murder uh and life begins at conception dna separate of the mother and the father that's that's life because without dna you won't have life but well i guess there's really no but so i think that what's i think that's what what's happening now and i i think abortion should be illegal and off the table but i know that that's not how most americans see it but in order for democracy to work it needs to it needs to be like it is right now where it the federal government is out of it and it's back it's delegated back to the states where the people vote because that's what democracy is uh, the will of the people and the states should have the right to decide and if you live in a state that makes abortion illegal then you should probably move out of that state if you think that uh, abortion should be legal and uh, personally, if it was up to me, I would say a sweeping ban of abortion across the United States because it's immoral. It's uh, death. It does no good for the woman. It does no good for the baby who has absolutely 100 percent no voice in the matter. And if you talk, if you see what, about the lady who was they tried to abort, uh, she didn't have a choice, but she was glad that she was born. And then found out that uh, her mom didn't really want her. So uh, I'm just glad that her life was is able to be there and to exist. And I got to thank the Daily Wire for the awesome content that they put out. And uh, Michael Knowles for being willing to do what he does. Ben Shapiro, Matt Walsh, Andrew Clavin, Candace Owens. They're all great people. And uh, I would encourage you guys to go on and uh, sub- Get a subscription with the Daily Wire Plus, uh, and you can get the the content as well. Uh, so, Rob, I, I send it back to you. All right. So, yeah, I agree. Thank you to the Daily Wire. All that extra content, make sure you guys sign up for the Daily Wire so you can actually get that. Uh, make sure while you're at it, you hit the subscribe button, that you hit the like button, that you comment, um, and, the, and then um, uh, back on the... Uh, Back on the topic, I'm gonna I'm gonna back away from the 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 moral and all of that. I think I was pretty clear about how I feel about the actual act of abortion, but about the whole Roe v. Wade thing, um, the framers of the Constitution knew that in order to be one nation, that we had to be a federated republic where the states have rights. Otherwise, the cities would trample on the people in the country, or the people in the country would trample on the people in the city. Because in actuality, back then majority of people did not live in the cities so um now they 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 knew that mob rule is bad they knew that direct democracy where like 50.00001 percent uh agreeing on something they they made everything really hard and really difficult and at the federal level so it's supposed to be difficult at the federal level they intentionally made it to where Like you have to get a broad consensus to do everything. And on this topic, we don't have a broad consensus. So it should remain in the state's hands. And if you feel one way or the other about your abortion rights, you need to write your governor, write your state representatives, write your state legislatures, like be active and push for your values or you don't have values. Um, But it belongs at the state level. We are a republic where the states have rights and responsibilities to the people greater than that of the federal government. The federal government has the obligation 
to protect the nation, not the ind individual. It is the state's jobs, the city's jobs. It's their jobs to protect the individual. Why? Because they are the most direct representatives to the thoughts, wishes, and values of the people that live in those states. And any argument about federalization of this stuff when it's not in the Constitution is simply trying to say that you know better than the person who lives there what's right for them, and you don't have that right. They already elected their representatives in their state, and if they don't like what their representatives are doing, they have the right to petition the state and get a ballot measure on their state ballots in order to pass laws, change laws, all of that. That is how the state level, and, and that's why the actual democracy in our country, the actual democracy is at the state level. So anytime you take anything away from the states, you're actually undoing democracy. So on the on Roe v. Wade, great job. Supreme Court, you need to kick a whole lot more stuff back to the states because they've been using the federal government to infringe on democracy and rights. And I could do like a five hour like um uh monologue about uh the constitution uh, through bureaucracies and uh bureaucrats writing regulations like oh my god i could go all all day on it um Amen. but at the most but at the most basic level the return overturning of roe v wade was absolutely correct the constitution says if it's not in the constitution it's the states why because our democracy is alive at the state level and at the state level and make sure that people that don't live here and don't share your values cannot trample on your beliefs but at the same time it allows us to remain a nation if we don't get back to that we don't stay a nation and roe v wade is one of those issues that i think prove that if we don't get back to the fact that we are a federated republic we are going to lose our nation yep so that in mind November 8th is coming up really soon. Get out the vote. Make sure you vote R all the way down the ballot. Brian, you just voted. I'm not going to ask you I what you voted for, but uh, <laughs> thank you R, for voting. <laughs> thank, thank you for voting. And uh, guys, like, share, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you can get notified when we put out new content because we're going to try and always put out some great entertaining content of our views of why we think that the left is evil or we sh why we should be sympathetic to people on the left. Um, any other thoughts, guys? I thought it was a great movie, great show. Uh, we're going to put out some more. So uh... I'm going to start to put, I'm going to start a petition that we drown leftists in the sink. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> the sink that Elon <laughs> Musk brought to Twitter. That Elon brought to Twitter. Yeah. That's <laughs> so anyway, Tomorrow is going to be the regular show, so we're going to actually we'll cover the like the current events and all the news and stuff like that. Like this is a, this is obviously a topic that we're all emotional about, so I, we all care a lot about. So thank you guys for watching. Um, thanks to Daily we, Wire. Yeah, yeah. Thanks to Daily Wire. Like obviously the watch parties wouldn't happen at all without the Daily Wire. I'm actually I, I reached out to four other content producers for doing other watch parties, so just waiting back. Hopefully will be allowed um but thank you so much daily wire for the great content you do and you know our viewers go make sure you subscribe to daily wire to support what they're doing um because they're the ones creating the content and then they have a whole lot more that we're not actually going to be ever putting on here like the extra features on this video like go subscribe to daily wire they're amazing and they give you good information every day and they have uh the daily wire has a good uh newsletter too so you get unfiltered news that's not censored right yeah cool. and, and they have they have original movies too so and some of them are very entertaining uh, I make... can't... terror on the prairie anyway. yes yeah, so we'll we'll do terror on the prairie uh really you guys i mean a really good the first movie that i saw that the daily wire published was run hide fight and i thought it was an awesome movie it was fantastic it's about a school shooting uh so go go subscribe to the daily wire you could do monthly or yearly uh the yearly is a little more expensive but if you get it like i did on thanksgiving you get 50 percent off so it, it's well worth it e even in, it, even if not 
what the daily wire is putting out is something that I agree with. And I want to see, because I don't like this leftist agenda, trans transgender woke garbage that's being put out. And the daily wire is fighting that. And I support that. So I will spend as much money as I need to, to, you know, make sure that I, I keep getting the daily wire so that I can get that content and, uh, keep bringing this stuff to you guys and uh, push it on you like a pusher man. So, and thank you revelers. Uh, the, the website is in progress, but thank you for joining us. Uh, we're going to keep content coming to you. We're going to, um, yeah, we've got more coming for you. We're in process on a lot of this. We're all just regular guys that have regular lives and regular stuff. This isn't what we do. Like this isn't how we get paid at this point yet. So it, it, we're, we're still working hard to make sure that we're bringing you guys good content and good conversation. So uh, keep aware, keep alert, fight the good fight, and subscribe. You guys have a great day. Thank you, Revelers. Thank okay. you, Brian. Uh, always great having you guys for a show. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a good night.